coming to the stage to sock some soul to your ass. This is the original bad girl of comedy. Give it up for my homegirl, Lunette! for being so patient and waiting on me. And I tell you, I almost didn't make it to this motherfucker because halfway on the way out here, a motherfucking toothache gripped my motherfucking ass so tough, my asshole almost flipped inside out like a cauliflower. I swear to God. I was in so much motherfucking pain. I took about 17 Vicodin, washed the shit down with a bottle of Chardonnay. I'm fucked up right about now, I'm gonna tell you. We gotta start going to the dentist, people. We just, there's a whole nation of motherfuckers laughing like this. <laughs> <laughs> we just, you know, it's something from here back that's going on in society. But I can understand it, because as a comic, you know, we don't have no health plan and shit. You gotta be a bona fide actor and stuff. I went to the dentist, you know, I manned up, saved us some money, and I went and had my teeth cleaned and, you know, had x rays and shit. You talk about, I had like, you know, a little situation going on in the back back here <laughs> and that I was gonna need a root canal. And so I was like, a root canal, okay, so how much is that gonna cost? He was like, well, you know, about $1,600. I said, for everything? And he was like, no, just for the one, two. I said, yeah, you better give me a toothpick and show that shit up your ass up. <laughs> I know $1,600 for no one fucking tooth. I mean, Listen, I had a grandmother in Arkansas. That bitch had one motherfucking tooth, and she could eat corn on the cob. You feel me? <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, you don't need all them goddamn teeth, no way. You only need about 10. But I can't tell you, I done decided I'm just gonna let all my fucking teeth fall out and open up an old lady blowjob stand. Fuck it. <laughs> but I think that you really gotta have good teeth to be on television, you know what I'm saying? Because I watch a lot of TV, and I observe shit. Now, I love Betty White. I think Betty White is like my motherfucking mama, you know? If something happened to Betty White, I'm gonna fling myself off a bridge. I love Betty White. But somehow, if you get too old to be on TV, you just need to go on and shut it down. Case in point. I TiVo'd Dick Clark's Rockin' Eve. Every year when I was a child, before I could go out, before I was able to go out, before I was old enough to go out, I would watch Dick Clark rockin' Eve. So I come back from Vegas, drunk as a motherfucker, lay down on the couch, gonna watch and see what I missed in New York this year. Now Seacrest, the king of every motherfucking thing, he's hosting Dick Clark's rockin' Eve. But Dick Clark said, I be goddamn, I don't give a fuck. I'm Dick Clark, I'm gonna be there till the motherfucking wheels fall off, prop me up, fuck you. I'm going downtown, somebody put my suit on me and prop me the fuck up, I'm going downtown. <laughs> so, Seacrest is like, and here we are in Times Square and it's, it's just about time for the ball to drop. And we want to give it up for all the acts you've seen tonight. We want to give it up for the Black Eyed Peas, yay! We want to give it up for Nicki Minaj, yay! And now let's throw it over to the man, the myth, the legend. Let's throw it over to Dick Clark. Take it away, Dick. Dick's like, it's almost midnight. <laughs> the man that had six strokes. He like, and here we go. <laughs> and Dick looks up at the ball, he like, Ten, nine, eight, four, two, what? Uh, happy leave. They need to go on and set it down. And then, you know, I can, I can recall when they had Muhammad Ali light the motherfucking Olympic torch, <laughs> who thought of this brilliant idea? <laughs> I 
remember. I said, they gonna get a, they gonna get a flame to Ali? They said, coming to the stage, stage, stage. Like the living torch, torch, torch. Heavyweight champion of the world, world, world. Well, have it, have it, Ali, Lee, Lee. Ali had the torch. He was like, everything. I was watching Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because I watched everything. I'm multi-cultural like that. And uh, my boy Ozzy Osbourne was the host. Uh, Ozzy, you know, Ozzy tried to go for hard, but he really like a little toddler, you know? Because Ozzy, Ozzy comes out at the end of the show, he's like, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. <laughs> and the Prince of Fucking Darkness, Joe. <laughs> I'm Ozzy Osbourne, been your host tonight. I want to thank Black Sabbath. <laughs> I want to thank Frampton. <laughs> and I want to thank. <laughs> anyway, who do you think all of you coming out tonight? Rock and roll! Then he leaves the stage like this. <laughs> White folks, I want to talk to you. If you have black friends, I want to let you in on some of the things that we're thinking, you know, <laughs> when you do the things that it is that y'all do. For instance, okay. My girlfriend called me crying like a motherfucker the other day. <laughs> I said, Tiffany, Tiffany, what's wrong? Oh my God, it's a muffin. It's a muffin. I'm like, well, what the fuck is wrong with muffin? <laughs> muffin, muffin has cancer. I'm like, muffin had cancer? I didn't even know muffin smoked. When the fuck did muffin smoke? <laughs> no. Muffin has cancer. I took Muffin to the vet. And he said it's gonna cost thirteen thousand dollars for Muffin to get chemotherapy. I said thirteen thousand dollars. Bitch, didn't I just ask you to borrow fifty dollars the other day? You said you didn't have no money. <laughs> Fucking shit is that? <laughs> then you know, black people, we have a sick dog. Mm. You open the gate. <laughs> no more sick dog. <laughs> You're home from school. Daddy, daddy, what happened to King? King ran away. <laughs> and then she's like, I don't know how Muffin, we feed Muffin the finest of kibble. We feed Muffin, it's, it's made from rice and grain that it costs. $37 a pound. $37 a pound? You know what, my grandma, the one with the tooth, <laughs> she had a dog that lived to be 92 years old. You know what that dog ate? Spaghetti, macaroni and cheese, ice cream, soccer to me cake, red velvet cake, yams, green, neck bone, any goddamn thing you put in the box, it's a fucking dog, bitch! <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to also share with you that I've been doing pretty well now in my career, and um, I'm about to make an investment. I'm gonna be one of the first females to open up a strip club in Los Angeles. Yeah. I should have on my license. It should be open by next summer. It's gonna be called Beefies. Yeah. Yeah, all the strippers will weigh like 180 and up. Yeah. And the uh, stripper pole is going to be different. It's going to be like about the size of a telephone pole. 
Now, we're not really gonna swing around that motherfucker. We're just gonna kind of walk around that bitch. It was hot in here. Ain't y'all hot in here? Hey, thank you guys so much for your attention. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good time tonight with the bad girls. Well, let's bring them out right now. Come on, bad girls. Come on back out. And these are the bad girls in comedy. I am Big Snoop Dogg. Hope y'all had a good time with us tonight.